Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey, and today is the final rankings episode as we head into the 2020 season. We've got tight end ranks today. We're going to go about 1 through 15 today. So if you haven't heard the rest of our rankings episodes, go check them out. Um, over the last couple weeks, we did quarterbacks. We did two parts each of quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. And today we'll just do the one. We don't we don't need to go 15 to 30 or 16 to 30 on tight ends. Maybe we'll throw a name out there to of players we like there. But you get a little deep once you go there. So we're not going to get too far into that. But before we do that, make sure you guys go check us out on Twitter at the FF Profit or Instagram, Fantasy Football Profit. The website's fantasyfootballprofit.com. There you can see all of the ranks, the full... I don't even know how I go like 50 or something at tight end, even though no one's going that deep in the ranks, but it's there. If you want to, it's there. If you want to check it out and also make sure you go subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash fantasy football profit. If you want to see us, I mean, I guess you can just, you can watch us do this podcast. That's always fun. So go check us out there. And also relegation leagues. If you guys are in those, we got two good weeks in so far. Me and Jeff have drafted a lot of teams and we get a lot of the same players. I feel like so far we've, uh, pretty much narrowed down the players we love at this point, really even further. And I would say before we get to this, episode, it's just kind of funny how um, it's not a player we love, but you keep getting Derrick Henry, don't you? I do. It's crazy. It's just, I, I did not set out to get him it's just, in any end, league. End of the first. We get these end of the first rounds, mid yeah. the first round, it just falls there every time. I, don't, I haven't had like a top three pick or even yeah. at the end of the round. I'm always in the middle. And in the middle, I, I had a number, end up with Henry. I had a number two pick the other night, got McCaffrey in one of those leagues. Who went? What Zeke went first? Zeke um, Zeke went. I think Zeke might have gone number one. The guy in the chat says he always likes to switch it up. Uh, I mean, don't switch it up. This is a good strategy. I mean, I don't know if this is the year to do that. But yeah. all right, tight end ranks. So tight end ranks. Let's jump into those. We posted them over on Instagram, like we've been doing the last couple of weeks, just to get some reactions from people and trying to see, you know, what what people thought about our ranks. You know, and there was there wasn't a, a lot of grace. Tight ends aren't though. You know. Always the most, I don't know, exciting of the positions. But there was a few. We had Kelsey number one. We had Kittle number two. So I'll just go with that first. We did have one guy who said, um, I mean, you saw it, Jeff. He's very, um, once again, he said we're, uh, here we go. This is from Jay Camp. I'll just, let's, let's, let's read this, okay? Once again, these dopes <laughs> hating on the Niners. Everyone knows Kittle is number one. So um, I will say to that. You're wrong. Yeah, I mean, he's number two. It's pretty darn good. We, we had a number two, and he is number two consensus. He's number two ADP. If you want to say Kittle is number one over Kelsey, you know what? I'm not going to argue with you because I think they're both they're both awesome. They're both great players. But Kelsey has done it for a few more years than Kittle. And here's the difference, I guess. It, I get the argument is why I guess the argument for Kittle is there's no one to throw the ball to right in San Francisco. It's just going to be him, which. Could be could be a thing, or they might just run the ball a lot. Possibly that could happen too. But I want the better offense. If I have two great players, those two they are great players. I want the player on the the more dynamic, better, explosive offense who's going to pass the ball a lot, and that's Kansas City. So give me Travis Kelsey, and that's as simple as that. Yeah, it, you know. all day for me. I, you know, I played around with the idea of of Kittle. But you hit on it. Hey, I mean, it's just not how the offense is set up. He did get the big contract. He is a wonderful tight end. He does it all, right? He, he blocks. He catches. He's, you know, an emotional leader. He's great as far as football goes. Kelsey just happens to be a little bit better when it comes to fantasy. You look at where they've ranked in the past few years, you know, it's, and this isn't everything. Kittle could jump over him. But, hey, like, Kittle is never ranked over Kelsey, Yep. And I mean, it's just what it comes down to. And in the last four years, Kelsey has been incredibly dominant where it, I mean, 2016 to 2019, he has been first three times and second once. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, what it comes down to for me, but, hey, he's safe as can be, but Hey, if you want to argue it, sure. Yeah. Go Kittle's ahead. a great player. Whatever. You can get him later too. Yep. Don't, don't, I wouldn't draft him over Kelsey. I'd wait. So that's tier one. It's Kittle. In Kelsey or Kelsey and Kittle. That's tier one. It's I think that's pretty clear to me. And I think there's actually just a two-player tier two, honestly. I'm going to break it down like that. Some might say there's a four-player tier one. I'm going to say it's a two-player and then a two-player. 
in tier two, we had it the same. We actually had our top six exactly the same. So three and four were Andrews, Mark Andrews, and Zach Ertz. So we both went with Andrews over Ertz this year. And nothing against Ertz. Ertz has been really good, but I do think Goddard is obviously not going away. I remember, it was it Thanksgiving? Was it a Thanksgiving game? I can't remember where. It just was like, the ball was going to Goddard, and it wasn't going to Ertz. And that just sticks in my mind. Like, that could happen more and more. Ertz is going to be great, but why would they not throw the ball out to Goddard, who is also potential to be a great tight end? And this is what, year three? For, is it year he three? He will be a great tight yeah. end. Yeah. It's and just so, a matter of when. And so that could take away from Ertz slightly. And it's we I mean, still ranking him number four. We're ranking him way up there. But because of that, I'm going to throw Andrews slightly ahead because Andrews doesn't have Hurst there now to take away targets. There isn't, I mean, just both of these situations, I feel like they are the best pass catcher right now on their teams, possibly. Even, they, they're, they have some, Ertz doesn't have, I mean, Goddard feels like his main competition. They, you know, they have the rookie. They have Alshon might be there. Who knows? There's other guys, not really. So they're both going to get a lot of targets. But Andrews, to me, on that Ravens team, he's going to get red zone looks. He's clearly the guy in the red zone, too. Yeah, Andrews slightly ahead of Earth for me. I don't end up drafting these guys, though. That's what I'm, I'll am i say this. I don't get them in a draft because I don't like – Andrews goes a little – they both go a little too high for me. If I'm going to reach on tight end, it's going to be Kelsey or Kittle. I don't end up with Andrews or Ertz much just being – that's how I work. And Actually, I'll say this. There's the next couple of players I don't usually end up with. I like to wait on tight end for that if I don't get Kelsey or Kittle. So I don't. I haven't ended up with Andrews or Ertz right. on any team yet. And to add to your point, yes, not only is Zach Ertz and Mark Andrews the number one pass catcher on their team, even though they're a tight end, they are by a large margin. I mean, you look at last year and the receiving for the Eagles, and Zach Ertz was targeted 135 times. Know who was targeted number two? It was Dallas Goddard yeah. at 87. Right. It's not even close. Yep. Yeah, it's they'll get the ball. They're they're. I just like to wait in tight end, so that's why I'm just gonna skip them. We'll go number five, Darren Waller. He was five for both of us. This to me is the uninteresting pick. I don't know what it is. He's ranked here, but I don't. I literally I never end up with Darren Waller. To be honest, I, I actually wouldn't mind ending up with him, but he deserves to be here. I think he actually might be I mean, the. If you wanted to put him in tier two, I would have no issue with that. Yeah. If you wanted to. Get him instead of Ertz or whatever. Yeah. I think he can wait, a, you know, another round. I he I he probably will do just as well as say Ertz and Andrews. He has that ability. My my worry with him is we've only seen it one year. And what do what do the Raiders look like mm-hmm. this year? We don't really know. Last year he had a, a breakout season. He looked really good. He had a lot of targets. Uh, you know, are they going to change anything up? I don't truly know that, but. He looked really good last year. But you're correct in saying, you know, does he have that wow factor? No, not necessarily. We'll see if he can get some more touchdowns. He only had three. He was, but 90 catches for 1,100 yards was great, Yeah, obviously. I mean, he really came out of nowhere there in year four after only catching 18 balls over his first three seasons. Yeah. And that happens a tight end, though. If that offense does improve, there is an ability for an up, you know, uh, shooting up in the TD ranking, as, as you will. Because three... You know, in tight end, if you catch a touchdown, it's gold. Because yep. usually a lot of these guys, after you go past the first four or five, they don't get a whole lot of yards anyway. So you're like, okay, well, I'll go for the touchdown threat, whatever that may be. I do think this year is a little bit different. I think we're going to see a lot of young tight ends kind of on their up, you know, on their way. But that is why Waller, if he doesn't have to catch a lot of them. If he caught two more touchdowns, one more touchdown, he, he would have jumped over a few of those guys last year. And he was already in the top five. Number six for us is Hunter Henry. So we both had him six. This, he is so talented, but doesn't really stay healthy, and I worry about the offense. But, well, I, I don't know. I think he, he's that talented where he needs to be here. We don't really have the numbers to really back it up yet. This is still more of a, I know that guy can play. I've seen him play. And this is where he's still young enough. This could be his coming out party this year where he really becomes a, a top tight end. We know it's in him. He could do this. He's only 25 years old yet. So he could actually break out finally. And it's all been about talent before this. It does. Yeah. I'm more worried about health. I think if he is going to break out, this will be the year, right? I would have said that last year too, but this is going to be his technically fifth year. I mean, he, he lost an entire season to an injury. So he's been playing you know, on and off for three years, really. Um, But it comes to this year. He's had the experience. He's in a position where he's going to be 
a huge tool for someone like Tyrod Taylor or a rookie. Um, he's a big body. He can get in the end zone. He's shown you that he has all the tools. What does the offense hold for him? I don't know, but if he was going to jump, like last year I think was a big one, right? Because if you're just looking at the target progression, mm -hmm. it keeps going up, it keeps going in the right direction. He got 76 last year with only playing 12 games. It's really healthy. If, you, if he actually was able to stay healthy, which is a very big if, I mean, you know, you're going to be nearing 100 targets. And that is what you're really looking for when you're looking for a tight end of this caliber. And that is going to be – it could be huge. And I think Tyrod doesn't throw near as much as Rivers, so I can't say it's better for him. But I do know this. If he gets a better rapport with Tyrod than he did with, say, Rivers, you know, because Keenan Allen was the number one guy there. If Hunter Henry somehow just nudges his way in there saying, hey, I deserve as many looks as, say, a Keenan Allen – or whoever else is going to be there, and Austin Eckler, who's going to get a ton of targets, all of a sudden he has got the at least the amount of numbers you would need in order to jump up. And I, you know, I've been singing his praises of how talented he's been for a couple of years. I do feel like if he gets hurt again, he's going to go the way of so many other players that I, I love so much. But um, this will be the last time I, I put him in the probably top ten if yeah. he gets hurt again. And that's just the truth of it. But right now, I still believe that it's not a chronic thing. I, I think he's had some really bad luck. It's crazy to me when you just told me this is going to be his fifth year. I know he missed the full year, but that is insane. I, I'm like, I'm, I, had to read, I had to look it up just to be like, wait, this is, is that right? Yeah. Wow. Remember, remember after year one, I was wow. like losing my mind because he had eight touchdowns on 36 receptions. And we thought, and then next year he, you know, he got banged up and they still had, you know, man, they did a two tight end set. And then he was about to break out. He was going to be the guy, and we, then he loses been, the entire yeah, season. We, we've been talking about him since David Johnson was actually good. <laughs> yeah. Back in 2016. <laughs> it's been a while. Wow. I know. Uh, this one hurts my heart a little bit, but he is that talented. He this deserves is, to be do here. do something this year, Hunter. I have gotten him in a few leagues because he drops he because does of drop. that injury concern. Yep. But at that point, I'm kind of like, I'm, I was kind of punting tight end anyway. I'll take the high upside guy. I can get someone later because mm -hmm. we'll go over a bunch of young guys that might be there. Um, number seven for us is not a young guy. It's uh, Rob Gronkowski. It's about the furthest to the way you can get from that, I feel like. So Gronkowski was seven for me, eight for you. Gronkowski probably got the most comments on Instagram today. And like one of them was, uh, Rob needs to be up. He, like He needs to actually be up there. It's been a couple years. But dude was the best tight end to ever play, and now he's healthy and rested. Which, you know what? Could, maybe. I don't honestly know. He was not good in his last season with New England, I don't believe. But was that injury? And, you know, he had a lot of them. Maybe he did need that year off. Maybe he can be the old Gronkowski again. He's older, but he's not ancient, you know, and tight ends can play. I mean, what? Antonio Gates played till he was 50, so it feels yeah. like. And he was still well, decent at the end for a couple it. years. All of it. it was not just him. Like, the pro bowlers really yeah, can play. Like, can. Tony Gonzalez. Tony like, Gonzalez could play. Greg Olson was still, I mean, he's still playing. Still playing. <laughs> he, could be, he could be good this year, but he was, up, you know, he was still good. At an, you know, an advanced stage. Advanced yeah. stage. We're freaking 34, Jeff. We're at an what, advanced yeah, stage. Was he going to be 30? He's, he's not no, he's going to be 31. We're, God, we're talking about these guys like they're old and ancient. We're up there. But so that was one comment about Gronkowski. Another one from Mike G was, with the reports out that Gronk could finish third in targets, why is he so high? Um, he says, he, this guy's like a gen, he's, he really wants to know because I have Gronk and not liking the reporting, which he still could be third in targets. Godwin and Evans. Yeah. I clearly think you'll be third in targets. I do too. And I was like, that's first fine, of all, though. that's not a bad thing on that offense. I, I, no. If you went somewhere else and you're like, you're going to be third in targets. When you have two guys that are supposed to be in the top 10, the good thing about that is you should throw the ball a heck of a lot. Right. And with Gronk, the reason why he's up here so high for me, um, I, I can make a few points here, but the number one is you already know Tom Brady. Yep. Gronk will be his, his, you know, his security blanket, if you will. And Gronk can get in the end zone a lot. And in the tight end position, which I have just talked about, that is gold. Especially when we're not putting him in the top five, right? It, You're not gonna like these next yeah. guys don't necessarily nope. get the most yards. So go for a touchdown upside. Gronk has an abundance of it. And also, I, I along with whoever said that, I completely agree with taking a year off will help his body recover. Because it was a nagging injuries, his back, his leg, his knee, his elbow. It was all those things. And even though you said he wasn't that good in his final year with New England, okay, and maybe. Gronk standards. Gronk standards. Yes, I was yeah. going to say by Gronk. Because he still finished 11th tight end, and he missed three games. And it wasn't even close to like the production he's used to putting out. 
But he's still, if he finished even one more game, he would have been in the top 10. You would have been like, okay, whatever. Yep. But you probably drafted him way too high. But if you look at his rankings, he missed the top 10 as a tight end three times. And I know he's older. I know that this doesn't necessarily mean, hey, he's going to go back to that young, you know, young buck when he was just bowling people over. But if you look at the kind of numbers he put up with Tom Brady, the same quarterback, he only missed the top 10 three times and it was because of injury. One year he was 15th and he only played seven games. One year he was 22nd, he only played eight. And then the final year he missed three games and he finished 11th. Other than that, he didn't finish outside the top five. And only, once again, 2017, not that long before, he played 14 games, finished first. Yeah. If his body is back to where it needs to be, this guy is going to be a top 10 play. I mean, that's just what it comes down to. So I, I get why people are skeptical and how that is a crowded, talented offense now. But this is also Rob Gronkowski, and I'm assuming healthy, and that's why he comes at the back end of, of the top 10 because you're going all upside, baby. Yeah, and yeah, this part at tight end, I'll just take this chance that he works out because if he doesn't, there's guys at the end of this that I like to throw on this a second. I think Gronk's a player. If you get Gronk, get a second tight end. Get one of the young guys later. I'm with you on that. You know, hundred percent. Maybe even get OJ Howard. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not done with OJ Howard. He's not on this list today, but I would. I no, would no, like I, that. He uh, he so, broke my heart. No, I I have this weird feeling about OJ Howard. I don't doubt it. Can you imagine? I think that offense, my yeah. God, when you have even I think just, do something. I think signing McCoy was a streak of, yeah. you know, stroke of genius and luck for them. But if you have McCoy, who's just smart, he can catch the ball. I don't even care what happens to Ronald Jones and Vaughn at this point. But if you can set up Godwin, Evans, Gronk, OG Howard, oh my gosh, that has that is the biggest lineup of wide receivers, mm-hmm. pass catchers that you will ever see in the NFL yep. is unreal. I actually moved OJ quite um, up my ranks a lot recently. So I don't we'll blame you. he didn't make this list, but yeah, he moved up to 18th for me. So I'm up. Uh, I'm ahead of. Uh, I haven't, that, oh no, I did not move him up that. <laughs> I, I have ever. I'm ahead of him than more than anybody. So let's we'll see what happens. Sorry, right, number eight, Evan Ingram. He's eight for me, nine for you. You want to get this out of the way? I don't really want to talk about Evan Ingram. No. I don't care. Hey, if he stays it's healthy, weird. great. Yes, this is the thing. He's had a couple of years where he hasn't. He's not been healthy, and so we the numbers I think are actually like last year's numbers for only playing eight games are actually pretty solid. That could that would translate to I think a good season, and we just need him to stay healthy. Same thing with Hunter. It's him and Hunter Henry. They both just need to stay healthy so we can see what they really are. Um, I don't love picking Evan Ingram. Like, I honestly don't love picking Hunter Henry. I've ended up with both of these. I haven't ended up with Ingram. I haven't had Henry. I don't love it just because of this injury stuff. Yeah, and because oh, also the... They're talented, though. They are. And Evan Ingram, we really thought he was going to do big things. But the last two years, he missed five games. And last year, he missed half of a season. He still almost made it to 500 yards and three touchdowns. It w- he would be in this consideration. The injuries is what worries me. Daniel Jones has shown enough for me to say, yeah, this guy could be a really big piece to this puzzle, right? They're trying to put together with Saquon, Daniel Jones. He's a good tight end. But I also don't like carrying multiple tight ends unless there's huge upside, right? Evan Ingram, I would say, would be part of that upside. I like Gronk's upside more because I think I think he actually has a better chance of staying healthy. I can't believe I'm saying this. But I really do. And I think with that offense, he, he's in a better situation. Um, but in my head, is Evan Ingram worth holding another tight end? Because you would have to. So I would have to take away bench yeah. spot. And that's that's where I struggle with him. And that's why I kind of decrease him. I, pay, I usually pass him up to go some of the later guys. Just how it works. So number nine is Austin Hooper, who actually jumped to nine. I had him 11th. You had him 10th. He moves to nine because me and you don't agree on a couple players coming up. I don't know how much I how great I feel about Austin Hooper. I think a lot of it was just the targets he would get in the Falcons. I don't think he was that great of a player overall. Honestly, I think he's just, I think he's okay. I think he's perfectly fine. I don't know how great he is. And I just don't know how the Cleveland offense is going to work passing the ball yet. I just don't know how it's going to play out. So it's hard to know how this is going to work. He's another guy. I just don't end up getting a lot because I just don't, it's a lot of unknowns with this off season, the way things have worked out. Any players changing teams, it just kind of worries me. Um, somewhat, somewhat on offenses that weren't very good last year. I'll say that, yeah, because the offense wasn't very good, and they've had no, no, no preseason here to really figure it out. I feel like it's just, I don't know if it's, I don't know if they've corrected it. So it, it I hesitate. 
Yeah, because I, of that, not seeing it. I, I don't blame you at all. I, he's, it's going to be his fifth year in the league. He obviously really developed in Atlanta. He did very well. Uh, you know, last year he almost hit 100 targets. He had 97, 75 catches, almost 800 yards, six touchdowns. Great. Every year he's gotten better, right? That's what you want to see. I'm, in my head right now, even though Cleveland was not very good, the way they've rebuilt the line by adding two tackles and – you know that they're going to try to run the ball with the coaching staff they have. They have these, you know, these great wide receivers as well. But in my mind, they're saying, okay, if we can block and we can run and we can establish a short game, which I think Hooper will be a big part of, I think then we can really use these other weapons like Odell down the field. So I think Hooper will, he won't have the numbers that he did last year when he finished seventh. But I think he will have, um, you know, he'll have somewhere in this range. I don't think he's going to, blow up by any means but I think if you're talking around 700 yards 600 yards whatever that may be and in four touchdowns five touchdowns it would put him a, around number 10 and I think that's realistic I think he turns into an average uh, I shouldn't even say average a just good a solid pass catching tight end but he does a lot of other stuff as well and I think that's why they really wanted yeah. him his skill set fits with what they're trying to do but I, I think he obviously you know comes back a little bit from that Atlanta offense all right let's go to number 10 tyler higby so jeff you had tyler higby at seven i had him at 15 so some of the comment there wasn't a lot so the the fair catch uh, kick podcast did say i'm with jeff on higby four out of the last four out of his last five games were over 100 yards receiving F- after beating out everett higby was the tight end number one which I will correct you on one thing here. He didn't beat out Gerald Everett. Gerald Everett Everett was hurt. hurt. Yeah. And and it does coincide with Higby's emergence in week 13. Gerald Everett was not on the field. That's that's where this happened. Gerald Everett was, he wasn't great, but he had a couple decent games too. He He had a seven for 136. He had an eight for 68. It's not, okay, I know it's not a lot. I think, I'm just not in love with Tyler Higby. And I don't know if this is going to translate because, I mean, when they target him, they, they went three and two and that so they did fine. But I don't think that's their offense they want to run. I don't think it's going to go run through Tyler Higby. Can you, I mean, it's not going to run through Tyler Higby. It's just not. I'm sorry. It's not. He's not the number seven, Jeff. He can't be that high. I, well, I think Gerald Everett's a better athlete than him. He's, I don't think Tyler Higby's that great. He breaks out at what, age 27. I just don't know if that's real. I think this is a, this is a Gary Barnage situation. Remember Gary Barnage from the Cleveland Browns back yeah. in the day? That's actually that's a, what a callback. I mean, it, I'm not saying that I'm not comparing them as players because I really don't remember what Gary Barnage looked like at that point. But Gary Barnage had a one-year breakout. It happens. It happens. I think that's Tyler Higby. A, a four-game breakout. He didn't even do this over a year. I think well, I'll call it a five-game breakout. I mean, yeah. his last five games were – Really, really good. I mean, he and was, they were, they were his in from weeks, you know, whatever though, thirteen to seventeen. He was the number one tight end, and yeah, is part of that like, is he going to finish that way? No, and that's why I have him at seventh. Also, he seems like he's pretty darn durable. Is he as athletic as even Everett on his team? No. Is he as athletic yeah. as these other guys? Yeah. No, he's not. But they use the crap out of him, and I, I have a hard time hearing people downgrade Higby when they lift Robert Woods up on this pedestal. I'm not saying I'm not saying you do this, but I've seen this a lot, right? And the whole thing about Robert Woods being lifted up over Cooper Cup, who finished number three last year, or whatever it was, number four, is the fact that, hey, these last five games, this last half of the season, McVay changed it up. He realized he could not have an offense that was built the way they, they won two years ago, right? With Todd Gurley at the helm and all of this stuff. So they started throwing all these little passes to Higby. He was big, tough. He could get down the field. He's pretty good after the catch. He's not the fastest guy, but you know, he's not, no, he's not, but he did really well when they did that. He only ran a four, eight, uh, 40. But if you have a two tight end set, which a lot of people, yeah, they, they could do Everett. They could do Higby. And then you have cup and woods on the outside. A lot of people are thinking this is the way they're going to develop now. And this is why they think Cup will go down. Woods will go up because he's better on the outside. Um, and you don't have a running back to lean on as we know of yet. So until something changes, I think that Higby is a very safe option. And that's why he comes here because after this, you know, we don't really know. Um, if you wanted to draft a young up and comer, 
Uh, I'm sure we'll get to one really quickly. If you want to pick Joseki or something like that, I would get it. Um, if you want to do that instead of paying the a little, you know, extra for Higby. But I, I still think that Higby is the guy. And if you just look at the numbers, he was getting, um, he was getting a good amount of targets beforehand. But the last five games, I'll just do Week Ten on right or Week Twelve on. It'll make it easier to understand. But he had six targets, eight, then 11, 14, 11, 12. And he turned, in the last five games, he had 107, 116, 111, 104, 84 yards, two touchdowns in there. The way they used him is what I really, really wanted to, to grasp. And Goff needs people. You don't have Brandon Cooks anymore, which caught a lot of balls. You don't have Gurley anymore you can lean on. What is their identity going to be? I think Higby is going to play a part in that, even if it wasn't as big as he did the last five games of last year. I think Everett will definitely be a piece of that. But Higby has actually been shown, hey, I can take the ball. I can get it down the field. I don't have to be the guy, but I have to be one of the guys. And that's really what I'm banking on. I think he'll get a lot of targets, and that's really where his his uh, value comes from. We'll see. <laughs> Not there. Not there. All right, number 11, Mike Isecki. He's 10 for me, 13 for you. This is all about, I mean, he started to show some signs last year that he could be really good. He's only, still only 24. He'll turn 25 this season. But he is just, we talked about him. We don't have to go too crazy in depth again, but he is just like a phenomenal athlete at the tight end position. He really, truly is. And I feel like that's going to translate. It's going to start to translate this year. And it does with tight ends. They get better. We've talked about this, all these breakouts. They happen later on. This is year three. He jumped from 22 catches to 51 catches. He went from 202 to 570, zero touchdowns to five. That is a good, <laughs> you know, he's trending in the right direction. I will say that. The QB situation is where it gets a little weird. What's going to happen here? I think Fitzpatrick's going to be starting to start the year. So that'll be good. We'll see how it plays out. But Gusecki, it's this is all about the athlete this guy is and how good he is. So that's why he came in um, number 10 for me. So that's just pretty much all there is to it right there. Yeah. I mean, and it, to that too, the last five weeks since I was talking about Tyler Higby, Gusecki was fifth. Yeah, as the tight good. end he's very very good I, I agree with you on the tight end thing or on the quarterback thing one Fitzpatrick if Fitzpatrick was going to be there all year I would actually be yeah. higher in just second that, that's the that's the key to nothing this. gets to it but especially if you're bringing in a rookie halfway through the year you know it's usually not good for too many wide receivers yep all right number 12 was Jared Cook he was both he was 12 for both of us and I pass it over him in almost every draft <laughs> I do too I can't I, I don't think I've ever drafted Jared Cook no. in the past few years he he's gonna probably get some red zone looks. Um, he only had forty three catches last year, which isn't like, um, you know, great. But he had decent yardage off of those. Got the touchdowns off of those. Um, yeah, he only had sixty five targets in fourteen games. That's what kind of worries me. But if he does translate these into touchdowns, yeah, he becomes very you know fantasy relevant at the tight end position. So that's why he stays here. I just I don't love. I've never loved it. I've never loved the Jared Cook pick. And yeah, that's it. I don't really care to talk about Jared Cook. How about we move to Hayden Hurst, number 13, which uh, you put him at 16, and I put him at 9. So this is where I have to um, go against some of my – I almost contradict myself. <laughs> oh, um, <good>. And, and <laughs> um, saying, ah, you know, I said about Austin Hooper. I don't know if I love him going to a new team. and stuff. Same thing, right? It's Hayden Hurst. The difference here, Hooper goes to a team that was a bad offense. Hurst gets to go into Austin Hooper's spot. I think that's that's why I have him so high. I think he's just I think he's better than Austin Hooper, honestly, as a as a player. I really truly I think he is, and I think he's going to just plug right into that Austin Hooper role, and that's what I'm expecting. That's why he ranks high for me. Can I ask you why you actually think he's better than Hooper? There's nothing to back that up, right? No. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure that everyone like he is a good athlete. Whatever you hear, right? You're you're he going he's, on he's, he's smoke a, signals at this point. It's kind of like okay, whatever. That's that's a lot of it. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, is he? Is he? I mean, he was worth a first round draft pick by Baltimore. Like people saw something in he, him. He, he is a good athlete. There's no doubt about that. I mean, Hooper's not the worst, but yeah. I mean, Hayden Hurst is a better athlete than Hurst, right? He's better. He's I think slightly he is, better. He's faster. I think he has the you know he the, has some of that. He yeah. he's it's not like it's Athletically. not crazy, but Hurst was a first round pick for a reason, I believe. So. I'm just gonna. I think he's just gonna be plugged into that spot, and it's gonna be a good, good, good role for him. And it's not again. It's not a crazy spot, but I think you put him way too low. He might be a little low, but I, let me say this: we've never seen him do anything really 
He has like one big run and everyone loses their mind. Hey, I don't have anything against Hayden Hurst, and I would probably like him if people weren't jumping on the hype train so quite so much. They, they have just I have like the, the knee, <laughs> knee-jerk reaction, especially when you're like, okay, well, what did Austin Hooper do after going up in production every single year? You know, it's like he finished seventh last yeah. year. You really think that Hurst is going to come into Atlanta, get over 100 receptions, yes. and all of a sudden blow yes. up the spot in tight, yes. tight end line? No, yes. I don't think so. Yes. So even if uh, that would have to occur if you think that he's going to be really up there. Other than that, yes. I'm going to be closer to that than anyone else. And once again, it's kind of like, how many times do you think he's going to throw? I mean, are you truly going to draft Jared Cook over him? Are you really going to do that? Well, no, but I think, okay. Jared, <laughs> I think Jared Cook deserves to be drafted higher, and that's why I wouldn't But you're not going to do it. No, but Hurst is going to go way before no, I'm willing to take him either, though. No, let's not practice what we preach yeah, here, Joe. The, well, those two guys, will, I will never get either of them because Hurst is never going to last until where I want to pick. It's just crazy to me. I have, like a, I have a bunch of other guys, and like I even have – and people will really get angry at me for saying this, but I, I have Goddard over him, one spot ahead of him. And I know he's tight end too, but guess what? He finished as tight end 10 last year, and he keeps getting better. Well, I think you're wrong. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> right. Well, let's end this list with two players real quick. It's Noah Fant and TJ Hawkinson. I think they deserve to be together in a tier, both second-year Iowa tight ends. So um, both a lot of potential, but that's what it is right now. It's potential. That's it. It's, it's all potential. Hawkinson had one awesome game last year where it looked like he was going to prove all those uh, all those haters wrong. They said the Lions shouldn't have drafted him where they did, and then he didn't do anything after that. But I think he I think he's going to be good. I do. I, I, I mean, this is the line. I'm drinking the blue Kool Aid. I was going to say I, I can't. I have, I have two. I'm drinking the Kool Aid. I can't do it, man. I, I look. He looked really good in that first. And I did he get banged up? He did. I think he's going to be good. I just, oh man, and Stafford's coming back. There's a lot of question marks. Could he be that guy that he was, we saw in week one? He could. Am I going to take the risk above all these? Like as, as soon as you get this far down in a regular, you know, 10-man draft or even 12, you're only grabbing one of these guys, really. And you can grab whatever one you want at the end. And so, And it comes down to a lot of really good guys, right? You're talking like Fant, Hawkinson, maybe Janu Smith. Uh, which one of those guys are you going to actually take? Because you're, you're not going to grab Hawkinson over – will you take Hawkinson over Fant and Janu? Yes. Really? Yeah. I had, uh, Why? I had Hawkinson 13. <laughs> I had Fant 14. And then I had um, Joe New probably um, 16. Yeah, I'm gonna take on. Oh man, we okay. Well, we disagree on the second half of the tight end list yeah. entirely. I am, I am doing it. So, oh, and there's a couple of comments I didn't get to, which uh, I'll just say real quick. So I, I actually messed up the on the, the graphic on where we had her. So people think I have her slow, which is not true. So this is actually means meant for Jeff. It says Jeff, why her so low? Tons of available targets. He's the Hooper of last year. I actually, I'd swap Hooper and Hurst rankings here. That was from um, official tugboat. And then from, uh, what do we got? RD40 says, all that love for Hurst and hate for Hooper, and these are their spots, I'd flip them at the very least. So two people say flip Hurst and Hooper in the ranks. Yeah, it's going to be that all day, too. So, all right. But that's going to do it for tight ends. We'll be back uh, in two days. We'll have our league winners episode, which hopefully will give you some good winners. Last year we did. We gave you some winners. Lamar Jackson, Mark Ingram, we were on top of it. So, Whatever we say, take it to the bank, except if you go back and listen last year and hear that I said Duke Johnson. But that will do it for today. Talk to you guys later.